Um, with regard to the teleological argument. Um, to which argument? The teleological argument. Teleological. Can we have that one come up, please? Um, I talking about it with one of my friends. He said to me, um, that's all irrelevant because you're thinking about it kind of from the beginning. You're saying how likely is it that one of these, a universe like this would exist. Whereas actually, as observers, we could only exist in a universe this fine-tuned. Um, yes. And so I've heard other people say that as well. Given that neither you nor Dawkins addresses that, is he just pulling a fast one on me, or what? <laughs> what your friend is talking about is the so-called anthropic principle. And this was an attempt to say that we shouldn't be surprised at the fine-tuning of the universe for our existence, because after all, if it weren't fine-tuned, then we couldn't be here to be surprised about it. And therefore, we shouldn't be surprised. This is generally recognized today to be a fallacious uh, argument. Um, just because it's true that only a universe which is fine-tuned for observers can have observers in it, it doesn't follow that it isn't improbable that a fine-tuned universe should exist. And that's why the appeal to the so-called anthropic principle today requires the appeal to the world ensemble. You've got to have the many universes, the many worlds, so that somewhere in the world ensemble, by chance alone, finely tuned worlds will appear. And then you can appeal to the anthropic principle to say, we shouldn't be surprised because all the possibilities are actualized in the world ensemble. So in the discussion today, the anthropic principle requires the world ensemble or multiverse hypothesis just as Richard Dawkins recognizes. So your friend would need to deal with the arguments about the multiverse and the world ensemble that I shared. Thank you for the question.